We're going to get some. How about paper ads? You know, newspapers or, or any of these media that's still out there that people would grab? Right? Billboards. How about seminars? Billboards. Right? Look at all this stuff. Now, which one are we doing, my God? We're doing some of this stuff. And if I just want to be an order taker, if I just want to be a McDonald's, because has McDonald's invested in street walking, um, you know, uh, 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 cashier people to walk the streets around the McDonald's to or take orders through the street, go into parking lots and get street? So McDonald's not doing that. So McDonald's advertises on the TV and says, come to us. We'll take care of you within three minutes. Hey, we have this great new sandwich. Come to us. So in order for us to enhance our number one way of getting jobs, because that's the easiest. When I'm order taken, people are already convinced the only thing I can do is screw it up. Hey, fatso, you sure you don't want a Diet Coke instead of a, a regular Coke? So that's the only way I can screw it up. So we better perfect our incoming and we better start looking at every one of these and say, what are we doing? Put this on a checklist and say, are we doing seminars and can we do it better? Are we doing radio ads? Well, why not? How much do they cost? How do I get it? I mean, there's radio ads, radio, there's internet radio ads, there's, there's all kinds of things out there now. Well, who's investigating that? That better be my marketing specialist because we are going to choose from all these ways. And this is just for our phone to ring. So right now, we got enough to keep everybody in this office constantly busy. And after the phone rings, we hit one of these ways to double, triple, quadruple, or 10 times the, the activity out of one call because our phone rang in one, one Main Street somewhereville in New Jersey. So you better know all of these if you're just an order taker. All right, now let's talk about order makers. And by the way, what kind, of, what kind of diploma you need to be an order taker? None. You better know how to answer the phone, be polite, and don't screw it up. You need a lot of product knowledge? Yeah. A lot to be an order taker? No. Mm. Oh, they're ordering number one. You have to know what ingredients in number one? No. Really? Don't screw it up. By the way, one of the things I wanted to, I, I started thinking about last night was somebody calls for a low test, right? Mm -hmm. I want to modify the list one bit. As soon as the, the word low test comes out of their mouth, should we schedule the low test immediately? The answer is yes. Yeah. And then ask them for what? After we schedule the low test. Because when you're scheduling the low test, you're going to do it when? Two weeks from now on a? Tuesday. Tuesday. Three weeks from now on a? Was it Thursday? Wednesday, Thursday. And I'm going to ask you, well, how much is this low test? What do you say? The specialist will discuss that with you, right? Based on the size and complexity. So based on the size and complexity of your Farscape, the, the, the specialist will explain to you what the cost is going to be. Because it's important. Is it on the front where it's very accessible? Is it in the back? Do you have to carry all the bags to the back? You'll have a little story, right? Yeah. Then as soon as you've got them, say, oh, I want as soon as possible, you know, and they pick that, that imaginary date, which we don't care. We're going to modify it anyway, right? What's the next question you ask them? Uh, have you had a preload test visual inspection? Because what do you need? You need that preload test visual inspection. I need that copy. Yep. Do you have a, do you, uh, so can you, can you give me a copy of the preload test evaluation? And they go, what? So you don't ask them if they've had one. You are assuming they already had one. Of course they don't, so we got to give them one. So what happens to your load test, uh, the load test thing you just went through? That's step two. No, it's a, you already have a date. Yeah. So now, is it a load test, or is it a, did it just become a preload test date? Preload test. You understand? So one of the important things here that I was thinking about yesterday, because we keep playing this in mind until we get the perfect formula. So don't think I know all the answers. I keep trying to like, so people call, hi, I want a load test. Say, great, let me help you out. Let me get all the name information I need. And let me see what the schedule is. And all along, they're going to ask you, well, how much is your load test? You'll say, well, the specialist will discuss that load test with you. What that fee is, because it's based on size and complexity. 
and where it is on your building. How, how accessible is it? But let me tell you, when you speak with him, he's got, you're, you're going to want to know what dates are available for you. So two weeks uh, Tuesday, three weeks Wednesday, uh, Tuesday Thursday, Tuesday Wednesday, and depending on the size, it's either going to be a half-day event or a full-day event for the load test. Then you move into your next question. Do you have a pre-load test evaluation? How do, how do I get a copy of that pre-load test evaluation? They say, what do they say? What's that? Oh. What's that? Now you kick into our script. Gotcha. So you give them what they want. I want this. Great. Start, start the process. Let me find your building. Let me, let me give you a date. How much? And then when they ask you how much the pre-load test evaluation is, what do you say? Specialist. Depending on the, the size and complexity of your fire escape, the specialist will tell you what it is. If not, I will call you back and tell what it is because the specialist is not available right this second. He's finishing up another call. But if he doesn't call you back in the next 30 minutes, you call me and I will get you the answer to your, my name is Judy, my name is whatever. Sounds good? Yep. Okay, guys. How many do we think we have here? Order taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and I've doubled up a lot. So we got twenty plus minus. <coughs> situations that we got to get under control every single one of them must be touched and maintained and perfected and massaged because some of them are going to do better than others based on the age so how many yelps am I going to get if the average person looking for a fire escape is 50 60 years old Not very many. but if you're 50 60 70 years old and you own a building and you ask your daughter and your son to get you some information, where are you going to get that from? Google or Yelp. Got it? So that's the kind of things you have to look. So we gotta, we got we to gotta perfect this because we can. So as we're building our outbound sales, we got to cement our foundation. And our foundation is how do people call us anyway because my incoming order taken will pay my bills. But I can't grow. And why is that? Because I don't know when they're going to call. Yeah. It's an unknown. But when you start order making, now I can grow nationwide. And why, why is that? Because you're making the calls. Because now I'm making the calls. Now let's figure out. Where can I get? Where can I get lists of people that I gotta call? Internet. Okay. It's not always the internet, but let's start out with the first one, the the blue book. It's a database. Okay. The blue book is a database, basically of every known vendor out. So there's the blue book, the Dodge reports, the. Um, there's all kinds of databases, just like this blue book, that contractors in the U.S. use to get the word out to just vendors. So it's not the blue book, it's blue book and others. Okay? So those are people that are actively have jobs, and if we have jobs, what can we use if we are holding a job and we want to get bids from it? Can we use the blue book? Can we use constant contact? Mm -hmm. So constant contact is not a blue book, but it's basically a program that you pay 15 to 25 bucks a month, and you create databases of lists, and you can create little, little email brochures with photos and video links and stuff like that, and you can blast out, it's called constant contact, in regions, states, or nationwide, so you make up this little poster and you say send it to everybody or send it to somebody. So that's all it is. Constant contact. So as soon as you build a list of every known iron worker within the Boston region and you get a new hit, who do we hit first? Constant contact. Everyone. And why is that? 
We say, hey, we got a job on Com App. Do you tell them what address in Com App? No. No? Say, we have a job on Com App. Are you interested? Do what? Call me. Call me. So you send it out to 100. How many are going to call you back? 20. 10? 20? What about the other 80? Yeah. Eh, they're jealous. They hate your guts anyway. But you keep sending them month after month after month. What happens? Call. Somebody's going to call. So your number may go up to 30. But what's going to happen when these people run across a fire escape? Because one of the reasons why they don't call you is because they didn't run across a fire escape. But they finally run across one. What have you been pounding into their head? Knowledge. Branding. So br constant contact is really used for branding who you are. McDonald's, 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 we serve food. McDonald's, 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 we serve food. McDonald's, 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 we serve food. And you're in some country that there isn't one McDonald's. You come to America, you're starving. Where are you going to go eat? McDonald's. McDonald's. Because somebody branded it into your head. You put it right into the right into your, into your skull. So the blue book and others. What other ways can can I uh, can I get on the phone and pound? This is from you. How did you make lists? Oh, they gave you the list. What do you mean? How did you get a list of 100? You found them? You made them? How'd you, how'd you make your list of 100? Well, oh, they just came in. They just came in. So it's a request for, for contact, right? Uh, we had inbound and outbound. Perfect. So yellow pages. So yellow book and yellow pages. You can go in and say all engineers in this area, all architects. But what they don't give you when you do the yellow pages and yellow book, they don't give it to you in a... In a in a Excel spreadsheet program. You gotta sort of clip and paste and, you know, put it in your hand, put it in, it really slows down the process. You've got list builders. And that these, that's these companies where you say, hey, I need a list of all this. And you actually buy the list. They'll send it to you in a, in a, in a um, in an Excel sheet. But you have to buy it. Got it? The blue book is now a list builder. Because of my monthly pay that I'm paying them, I, I now have access nationwide till January 1st to every known person that I normally buy or sell to. So I need to go in there now over the next two to three months and do what? Get all build lists. Yeah. Build lists, download. Build lists, download. Build lists and download. And then when they shrink my account down to not 50 states anymore, just regional states that I'm doing. You still have all those lists. I still have all those lists that I built. Okay, and I have a program called the Project Pipeline, which is like the program that uh, um, the the sales program that you have that we barely use. We use it for the totally wrong reason, which is ACT. This is like ACT, but for builders. But it's also married to the Blue Book. So now every ad, every scripted letter, they have a, a library of things that you can say. And so you just walk in. Okay, we just got a hit in Utah. Should I send it to you know all the engineers? Regionally in Utah or the whole state of Utah? Well, how many in the whole state? There's only 272 total in the whole state. Engineers, for example. I send it to everybody. Because now you're branding. Yep. But the call is from Salt Lake. Only the ones from Salt Lake are going to call you back and say, yeah, I can help you out with that fire skip call. Great. It hasn't come in yet. We're still inspecting. But what is your fee? Oh, where I'm 75 bucks an hour. Oh, I'm this. Well, how big is your firm? Oh, we're 50 people in here. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm single guy, one man operation, part time. I'm semi retired. Which one do we want to work for us? The, the 50? Yeah. Or the, or, or, the, or the single guy? 50. Nope. The single. 50. You know what kind of you know what kind of overhead they have to maintain all those crazy guys having their lunch? So you don't want the 50. You want a brand to the 50. So that every project they get in and there's a fire escape there, who are they, who are they going to call? They're going to call you because they're too damn busy and proud to do a fire escape because gar fire escapes is the garbage of their industry. But what about the one-man guy? Is he 75 or 175 an hour? 75. 75. What about the 50-plus engineers outfit? Are they 75 or 175 an hour? 175. 175. Got it? So, blue book. And other list building companies like that. What else do we have for outbound sales? Seminars. City officials also. City officials. Because we just got a call. Right? 
So I got to call one, two, one Main Street. I call the city about one Main Street. It used to be 12 guys, now it's down to three. They're overwhelmed. So my job is to come in and do what? Give them immediate links to existing pre-recorded seminars, which they don't have time to watch. So you give them the man's version, inspect it, spot repair it, load test it, inspect it, full repair it, no load test, it's a certification. That's your whole six hour class. If you want further explanations, please watch the videos. Otherwise, this is what I'm doing. Do you want any other criteria? And you say? Nope. Nope. I'll say this exactly what I want. Seminars. What else? Gonna make is gonna. How else do you grab that phone, grab that internet, and go find people? Website. I don't understand what you mean by website. Like our web, like the Firescape inspection. No, that's website. making people. I'm gonna. I gotta. I gotta make the phone ring somewhere in America. Mm -hmm. So the blue book is gonna create lists, right? Because right now in the blue book, I, I say I want to call. There's a hot pocket going on in in Jersey City, and they're really pounding. Uh, they're really pounding the um, violations. the violations there. I gotta call every management company, every real estate company that is buying, selling, or renting in that city, and say what to them. I inspect and repair fire escapes. Yep. Much. Your city has a, they're really aggressive on that. Have you noticed? Yeah. Okay, we inspect and we repair fire escapes. And we can get you as many vendors as you wish to, to, for your clients to get bids from because we, we, you can wash those all through us. Or do it all yourself. And what, and what do real estate agents want to do? They want to work or collect commissions? Collect commissions. Right? So all they want to do is just pick up the phone, let somebody else pay for it. Make it happen. You do it. Just get. I need to. I need to get this to close as soon as possible. And who's going to handle that? Other companies or your company? Your company is going to, because we're professionalizing an unprofessional business. Right. So what else? What, what else we got out there? So we're going to build lists of every known iron worker. So every known iron workers, we're going to call them. Okay. Iron works and welding engineers. company. We're going to call all engineers. And architects, right? And tell them what? What are we gonna tell them when we call them? We do fire escapes. Hi, we do fire escapes. If you ever have one, our fire escape services network can handle any of your reports. We'll do the job. We'll give you a price, ten-year warranty. Hey, if you don't want the liability, our other division, independently owned, insured, and licensed, will inspect any fire escape for you directly to your client or through you to your client. We'll inspect any fire escape more properly licensed and insured. Oh, I don't have anything now. That's okay. We'll keep you on our list. We'll check in every month with you until you know our name. And so that's how we that's how we outbound sales. You plant seeds. What's another way we do it? Downtown walk arounds. And what's that? Walk around, see fire escapes. Right. You go down to the middle of a downtown and you walk around a square block. You bring your stickers with you, and you walk, and you look up, and this is a horrible fire escape, right? So you put a sticker on the fire escape, you look at the Chinese place in the, on the ground floor, and you do what? You walk in, say, how you doing? You own this building, or you rent from this building? Oh, I rent from this building, great. Who, who I'm, I'm doing fire escape inspections, and your fire escape has some issues, who do I call? Oh, Mr. Chan owns this place. Okay, you have, Mr. You have Mrs. Chan's phone number? Yeah, it's Mr. Chan's phone number. Okay, see you later. It's called downtown walkarounds. It's called fire. <laughs> Great word, ready? Fire scaping. It's a great excuse to get out, press the flesh, walk around, and turn things over. Because you're either gonna, uh, you know, shoe a rabbit or you're gonna shoe a deer. And they're there. You know what I'm saying? And they're there. So, in outbound sales, we gotta use the phone book. We gotta use, which is, you know, the Yelp pages and such. We gotta use the, the internet, which is find sources of companies that advertise their work in certain places and put in keyword searches. Keyword search, fire escape activity, and if it's in there, the specifications, which I've, I've got many 
Many examples are there. Hi, do you have fire escape? Uh, no, the job is done. Great. What's the second sale? Because I already wasted my phone call calling you. What's my next sale? If they don't give you the job because you, yeah, I have fire escapes. Great, can I do that job? Oh, it's already done. What's the next step? Interview. No, it's branding. branding. I need to brand you with my name so that the next fire escape I want you to call me. So you can use the NFEA to basically say, I have some great information, some great, some great stuff, and you use those letters, you use tragedy stories. It's called fire escaping and branding. So you got constant contact as you build lists. You constantly send something out every month called branding. Yellow pages, list builders, seminars. What's the seminars? What are those about? Teaching uh, inspectors. And right. What that is about is that's actually the same thing as finding a fire escape. I don't find violations. I make them. How do I make a violation? Well, what you can do during your downtown walk around, you can actually walk in, see a problem, call the city official, say, hey, I'm underneath this fire escape at 123 Main Street, and there's a dangling tread ready to hit me in the head. Yes. And they're going to ask, oh, what's your name? Oh, it's an anonymous tip. This is a concerned citizen. You can make any story. I live in the building. I don't want any trouble. But there's a dangling tread, a smashed cantilever, something. And, and, you know, you know, and you know what they've set up for you? All over the country? 311. So you walk downtown, walk around LA, downtown, walk around New York City, and there's a dangling tread. Who do you call? 311. Nobody. You call 311. And an operator with a headset on who doesn't is taking information about rats, cats, fire escapes, urine, poo. Dead dogs, raccoons, alligators, and pigeons. And what do you say? They need only one piece of information. Hi. Okay. What's the problem? Oh, I'm at 123 Main Street. And there's a fire escape tread ready to hit me on the head because I, I was walking underneath it and some rust hit me on the head. And I looked up and there was a tread ready to fall on my head. Okay, your name? I, I live in the building, I'd rather not say. Okay, so it's an anonymous tip. And um, what's, the, what's the nature, you know, how bad do you think it is? Oh, I think it's ready to fall immediately. So you think it's a life safety concern? It's a life safety concern. Thank you. And they hit the word go, and guess where it goes? It goes to your neighborhood fire department or building department, whichever one is handling that type of call, and guess how long they have to clear it? They have to clear it within 30 days. In some cases, when it's life safety, they have to clear it within three days. And they're going to give you a number at 311. Can I have a, a reference number to track it, please? Okay, your tracking number is 123711. And you write that down and do what? Go online and do what? Check who it went to. And in order for them to close it, guess what they have to do? They have to send somebody out from the city official and go there and look at it and say, confirm, there is a problem here. Or sometimes the building inspector at his desk, right, has to just create a violation process and he can close the case. So he says, and he reads the complaint that came from a computer, and it says, 123 Main Street, dangling tread over the sidewalk, does he have to go there and confirm? Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't. He just issues a violation, and it is sent by mail. And as soon as he says, violation issued, and he hits go, what happens to that 311 um, request? It gets cleared. It gets cleared off the, sec off the operator's one. But it starts now a 30-day process in where? In the city. In the city process. The football just got passed. So you have a football. I throw it to 311. Sarah grabs it and types it down. What's the concern? Sarah grabs the ball, throws it to the building department. The building department receives the ball. And what's Sarah do? She's all done. Thank you. They did this nationwide to stop the thing of violations of having a human, in, a human contact. 
They wanted humans not to, like, oh, that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. Rat will just walk away. The complaint had to be answered. Either you went to the site or you issued some sort of corrective action. So guess what? 311. Huge. 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 So in order for you to have 311, what do you got to go do once a week? Tom? Huh? Fire escaping. Fire escaping. Why do you think I have that little scooter over there, Tom? So you can ride around downtown. Because why? Because downtown is huge, dude. Yeah, because you don't have to see So you just walk. get on that. It's got a little seat. And we did. Me and CJ have done. I got videotape of us doing downtown walk arounds and using that scooter. And that thing is fast. It's got two or three hours worth of power. You know what I'm saying? But main, mainly it's made for you to get into alleyways and stuff like that and just keep walking around. Okay, oh, there's somebody across the street. You know, you walk across. But then... Now, so, sadly, sometimes the next job is, you know, the next fire escape grouping is two, two blocks. So you just get on it, go to the next one. And once you see your battery's kind of half dead, you can make a call, whatever vehicle had dropped you off in that area, because fire escaping is usually done by two, you scoop up the machine. Got it? But you have to love it. Sales. You know, it's turning rocks over, it's, it's, it's ringing doorbells, it's pounding on doors, it's personal one. Get out of my office! Get out of here! Yeah. It's taking down names and phone numbers and photographing. So there's a whole process associated with identifying. We actually were putting ads up, but it never, it never went to fruition. We wanted to get college kids on bicycles and skateboards and to just go put stickers on all the fire escapes in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. Right? So we pay a certain amount of money, we get a group, we're looking for, you must have an, a bike, you know, that kind of thing. And basically, this is how you got paid. You got, it's a piece, it's a piecemeal job. We'll give you a stack of a, 200 fire escape stickers, right? You show up with your bike, and we tell you, okay, you're going to have this area, and I, here's your map, and you've got to identify every fire escape, and we pay you for every photo. So I need a photo of the fire escape, and then I need a photo of the sticker on the fire escape, and then I need it on this map, you get a buck. So you can make 200 bucks today. And I need you to handle these th this area over here. But I need, if you do all these three, you get it. If you got the point, if you, if you didn't mark it, you're gonna get it 75 cents. If you did only one of the two, but you got a picture, but you didn't get a sticker on it, I'm only gonna give you, a, you know, so you're gonna, it's basically, I, to get the full dollar, you gotta do this to every one of these five cents so I know what building it belongs to. And then you go on the internet, and you go to Zillow, or the, the city uh, what, for taxes, and if you got an address that has a 20-story 20 20 building, how do you get the phone number? Call the city. Call the city and say, what's, who's on, who's on, you can actually, you don't have to call the city, you can go online and check the tax records, and they'll say who owns that building. Or, the person doing all the tagging, Firescape tagging, what you make them do is, they have to go to the front and get, there's always some number who manages the building. That's the extra quarter. Give me a contact name for this address. And now I need a picture of the front door, plus a picture of the, of the contact, you know, who to call accordingly. So it's a nice performance-based activity. I just want the sticker really on it, but in some cases, you need. so would you like to have some fun in, in, uh, in LA and on a nice sunny day and have three guys? Sure. Two girls and one guy, two guys and one girl, all on bikes, you send one this way, you send one that way, and you all meet back here, and they just have a checklist. And they're all on scooters and bikes and ro you know rollerblades or whatever. Doesn't matter what they used. They all got paid. Now by the hour. What? Buy the sticker. Buy the sticker. And you have to do, you know, I need a picture, and you, you just download the cameras and boop, done. Got it? So what else is outbound sales? What other way can I turn over a rock and make some money? I can't think of anything. Referrals. That's the that's really gonna be the last one. But if it's a referral, then wouldn't they be calling in to us? No, nope. referral. You're talking to a very good client and you data mine that client. So I talked I, I've got Diana Kilroe at Harvard. Yeah. I have been asking Diana Kilroe to give me the contact of her main nationwide facilities manager, blah, 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 you know, so I, I basically mine the network, you know what I'm saying? So I got a big outfit, and they have tentacles all over the U.S., so 
So a lot of times every boat has its bottom, so you're dealing with Boston. But they have the same company in Chicago, and I'm not in Chicago, so now I refer into it, and now that's, that's more like...